Hi, and welcome to Hair with Claire. I'm your host, Claire Devereaux. I'm a trichologist, a stylist, and the founder of Hair Health Essentials. Join me every week with my guests where we talk about big hair, short hair, loud hair, quiet hair, shedding hair, wedding hair, everything in between the nasty and the good, and where you can find out how to have a good hair day every day. We're gonna unlock the secrets to healthy locks. So hi and welcome to Hair with Claire. My name is Claire Devereaux. I'm your host. And this week I'm so excited about my guest. Now she is a big digital creator. She has an amazing Instagram account called Big Kid Problems. And she's also the host of super popular podcast that I got the pleasure of being on this week called Bottle Service all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to give a warm Irish welcome to Sarah Merrill Hall. How are you, Sarah? Thank you for joining me. Hi. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. I love a good podcast swap. I know. It's a great idea, isn't it? And I loved being on your podcast. I loved sharing all my tips and my tricks about hair. But now I want to hear about you. So can you tell me, first of all, you've got a gorgeous head of hair. We'll get into that in a second. Can you just tell me a bit about your background, about your podcast and, and about your account? Yeah. So for anybody who doesn't know me, um, I run the account Big Kid Problems on Instagram. It's just like a funny, lots of memes, lots of original jokes and content on um, Instagram, Twitter, all of that good stuff. And it's mostly about like feeling it's called Big Kid Problems. And it's mostly about feeling like a kid kind of thrust into the adult world. Like all of a sudden you have to make all of these crazy hard decisions. And it just kind of makes fun of, you know, day-to-day -day life and work and family and relationships and all of that good stuff. So it's something I started actually out of college. I've been doing this for a minute. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And then um, through the popularity of the Instagram, I started my two podcasts. I have Big Kid Problems podcast. And then I have, once I got pregnant um, last year, I started a pregnancy podcast called Bottle Service. And it takes you all through 40 weeks of pregnancy with me. And then we're in a postpartum season right now. So that's where I had you on my show talking about postpartum hair, which for anybody who knows the struggle, it is real. The postpartum hair is kind of one of those things that hits you like a bus that you don't always expect to happen. Um, but yeah, it was, um, it's great. So I'm, I'm kind of postpartum now. I'm finally kind of coming out of it. I'm, I'm a year after having a baby. And it's, it's, we're, we're doing it with who I, we are, we are in it right now. You're in it one foot in front of the other every day. But what was your postpartum hair loss journey like for anyone listening um, for maybe the signs? Because when I spoke to you before, a lot of people experienced postpartum around their hairline and around, around the edges of their hair. But you said yours was actually more at the back. So someone could be listening to this going, well, it's not around the front, so I mustn't have postpartum. So tell me, what was your, what was your experience? How did, you, how did you notice that you had postpartum hair loss? Yeah, well, one of, the, one of the first signs I'd say I noticed, first, I want to say that I had heard horror stories. You know, I had heard all these crazy stories, like your hair is all going to fall out. I'm like, great, just what I need on top of the video. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm not sleeping, you know, all of the whatever. And um, the hair loss, I was really scared by, but a couple months went by. I'm like, never didn't happen to me. I'm one of the lucky ones. And I was in the shower one day and just noticed like I, I always kind of have some clumps in the in the shower. I have a lot of hair. So, you know, I'm always going to see some in the drain. And I started noticing a little bit more than normal and a little bit more than a little bit more than normal. And just I started just seeing like a big, big increase. And I, I started needing my husband to clear out our drain a lot more frequently. <laughs> um he was more horrified by this whole process than anybody but um yeah that was kind of how it started and then I didn't even realize what it was but when I started putting my hair up because you know as like a new mom my head my hair basically lives on a, a bun on top of my head 24 7 and I just started noticing that it looked like I was wearing my hair half up half down because of the amount of breakage in the back of my hair. And even now I am a year out and I have what I lovingly refer to as a rat tail. <laughs> I have like basically a separate ponytail of hair in the back um, of just 
you know, broke shorter hair than the yeah. rest of my hair. So I guess I'm lucky in that it's not in the very, very front. But um, yeah, I mean, it is, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Well, for anyone, I know they can't see, but anyone, if they want to look at your Instagram, which I hope they're going to, obviously, and follow you, you have fabulous head of hair. You're gorgeous. Your hair is thick and it's fabulous and it's long. And it's like the American dream hair, I would call it, right? It's like blonde and gorgeous, like you. And so I think, yeah, you were very lucky that it's only at the back. But still, I think when you see a lot of hair shed, it's very frightening. And I think it's good to tell everyone and to let them know you are on the other side because that's what I like to try to kind of give that light at the end of the tunnel that it's not, you're not going to go bald. There's so many scary stories. It's like, I think when you're pregnant and um, you're probably better not to, you're not to, to listen to many people really because anyone that tries to scare you, that's their journey. You know, everyone's journey is so different. And the same with postpartum hair loss or any kind of hair loss. It's very individual. So some people might get it really badly and some people might not, but you're not going to go bald from it. So that's something I do like to get across because I do think a lot of moms are struggling as it is. As you said you're like you're deprived of sleep kind of like you are today I think as well you've had a long night haven't you <laughs> yeah and it's hard like it's really hard then to have to deal with everything else plus your body and and then your hair that's like your crowning glory and you must have found that difficult but as I said you're coming out of it the other side so it's growing now and you feel it's starting to get a bit thicker as well Yes. And I've noticed too, just in the shower, like I'm not seeing the clumps as that I hair. was at a, at a, as a, at a certain point. Yes. So yeah. I think we're, we're on the, we're on the right track. And again, I'm one of the lucky ones. If I wear my hair down, you would have no idea. You know, everybody, everybody is just like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky that you're, you didn't get that. And I'm like, oh, I did, but it's just, it's hiding. It's hiding. But I have had friends. Yeah. I've had friends that have the full postpartum mom bang. And it's, it's a real thing, but I mean, there's, there's ways you can style it. There's, it's just a period of time in your life. And honestly, I mean, there's so many other things to worry about in the postpartum period. The hair is just, you know, you, you just gotta, you gotta roll with the punches. You do. What, what do you think is the hardest thing? Like as a mom at the moment, do you think it's the speech deprivation? Do you think it's just feeling maybe a little bit lost for your old life sometimes? Do you find that even difficult sometimes I mean or is it just a combination I mean it changes every day yeah, <laughs> like I know. today I today I would say the sleep deprivation uh but for the most part I have a very good a very well sleeping baby um he we, babies go in phases like there's sometimes where you know everything's great and then the next week he's teething and you know the week after that he has like an injury like I right now in the I'm right now in the stage where um, my little guy just started walking maybe oh. like two three months ago, and now it's just so crazy to see them. You know how long it takes them to take that first step, and now he's just running at full speed, and like his brain and his feet don't communicate at the same level, so he's yeah. tripping all over the place. He's falling down. He's already like hurt his wrist. He's like hurt his he's like bested his lips before so like I'd say that is the hardest part because if yeah. anything happens to this kid he's okay five minutes later but I am it's just not well I know <laughs> if I see him get hurt it just is the worst it is and you know I think it's a very hard stage that one year mark because like that all they want to do is explore but they haven't they don't know the dangers of anything and you can see danger right. everywhere I always find that like a lot of my friends have small children too and my brother and his fiance they just had a, a new baby and she's only five months but like you know you can see they progress so quickly and it's all the sharp edges even if you go to a restaurant or like the little things that like they're oblivious to but you are just constantly like oh my god so it is it's tiring during the day when they're awake and then obviously trying to get some sleep and it kind of all adds up to to the whole thing right it's hard to get yes. time what do you for me time what do you do you have anything do you like to go for massages do you what do you like to do for me time for sarah time do you get for sarah, sarah time, time? I, I do. Thank God. It's so important. I mean, I honestly like it's one of those things I wasn't doing in the very, very beginning postpartum phase. I, I, I think I went through periods where I honestly wouldn't leave my house for like weeks at a time. It's just very easy to get sucked in. And you're kind of in this black hole of new baby life and keeping them alive and trying to get them on a sleep schedule and fed and all of this where I would, you know, realize three, four days later, be like, wait, I haven't changed my clothes. Like I haven't showered. Wow. <laughs> and all like that was a really tough phase. So I think I want to say around like the sixth month mark is when I started 
getting actual help or, um, you know, I, I even just, I felt a little bit more comfortable with my baby. I'm a first time mom. So I think it took me a while to feel comfortable having anybody else watch my baby. Ooh. And, um, yeah, luckily I have an amazing mother-in-law who like loves to watch him and will, would take him. So that was like the beginning of my me time is, you know, I would let her babysit him for a couple hours a day and I would get out and do workouts. I'd say that's probably my, the, best and biggest thing that I do for me time is I get out and try and do workouts because I mean it just hits all the things it's like I you know I it's good for my mental health it's good for my physical well-being it just like gives me endorphins makes me happier makes me stronger I struggled with like a tough recovery after birth too I like you know I, I was so used to being you know athletic my whole life and working out and and I I ended up with a C-section and I came to a point where I'm like, oh my God, I have no core strength at all. Like I, every, all the workouts I used to do, I can't do anymore. So I had to kind of like rebuild my strength from like level zero and um, going on workouts, you know, get, gaining strength is something that has helped me just in so many areas. So that's probably my number one thing. I think it's so important and it's also linked because obviously we're talking about hair as well on this podcast. I also think that your mental health is so linked to things like even your hair showing. Like when your hair is healthy, usually you're in a healthy phase or you're eating well, uh, you're getting sleep, you're, you're, you're working out and mentally you're in a good place. And I also think that, you know, I have even clients where I've noticed through the years where maybe they're a blonde bombshell for years and then all of a sudden they go through maybe a bad breakup and they go dark or they do something like elastic, right? Or, you know, or I, a lot of girls that, you know, they, they get married, like growing their hair the whole way through, they're dating him, you know, they've got the ring and then they, they get married. All of a sudden they come in, they want to go darker and shorter. And I'm like, what, you know, like what's going on? And I always think it's like a reflection of something. Even in my own life, it's always a reflection of something. So what is your reflection? Do you, do you believe that? Do you think there's been times that your hair, like if you were to look back on photos when you're single or you're dating, has your hair reflected that? Like, are you, have, are you in a different <laughs> What's funny is, I mean, honestly, with my hair and I'm like, I don't want to sound any certain way, but I will say like, I've been blessed with, with, I would say great hair. And so I haven't, I, I really haven't changed it. And every time I try to change it, my hairstylist is like, no, you've never done short. You've never like just cut it short in a, in a mad moment. Or I did it. I did it. I went short once when I was like in middle school and it was okay. so traumatizing and it looked <laughs> terrible on my face shape. And like, I have a very round face. And I even actually, I was talking to my hairstylist recently because short is kind of in now. Mm. And I was like, oh, I love kind of these like long bobs. And I was showing her and she's like, absolutely not. She's like, you just don't have, she's like, your hair is so thick and heavy. Like the length actually, you know, helps keep it smooth, keeps it um, looking right. She's like, if I cut that hair short, it is just going to poof and right up around your face. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes with shorter hairstyles, with they're more work. Now, I wear a lot of extensions, so I cut my hair. I have my hair long, I have my hair short because it's not really mine. It's, you know, you know, I like to wear extensions, so it's fine. But when your hair is long, it's definitely a gamble because it's a huge change. And what I meant the more so is with your color, because we did talk on your podcast about, you know, obviously a lot of us are toning our hair down a little bit. I have got my own color kind of through the underneath now where I was really platinum as well. And mm -hmm. I said you were too, but do you think when you look back, were you platinum at like certain times, like were you blonder at certain times and have you toned it down? Do you feel that's a reflection of something? And yeah, I'd say like in my early twenties, I was going for blonde bombshell. You know, I did like yeah. more platinum blonde, kind of that like Pamela Anderson, like sex pot, blonde, you know, bright, <laughs> shiny, you know, gets attention. And well, honestly, it's not so much a reflection of like any certain thing. I think it's, if it is a reflection of anything, it's more so that I just like have less time and I care about the health of my hair. Cause I think after a couple of years of bleaching it a little too blonde, I noticed damage and I was like, this isn't looking good anymore. So I care a lot more about like keeping my hair really healthy and trying to go a little bit longer in between um, highlights because if I can go, you know, even if I can go from six weeks to eight weeks at the end of the year, that's like a, a decent savings and um, it just less chemical treating in my hair. So I'll go, I, I have in the last, the last like probably five years went a little bit closer to my natural shade, which is like a little bit more like of a honey blonde. Um, and that has helped a lot. And then sometimes, especially in the fall, 
in the fall and winter, um, I'll even go like shade it a little bit even darker or I'll do a root tap. My stylist will do a root tap so that it grows out and gets like a little bit more of that rooty look. Um, so I'll go instead of like, you know, seven, eight weeks between colorings, I'll I'll do like 10 to 12 sometimes. Okay. okay, that's good. And also like for treatments and stuff, do you use masks on your hair? Do you look after your hair? I know that you've been using obviously some of my products, which I'm delighted about, but do you use like treatments as well in your hair? Do you, do you find things like that helpful, like oil treatments or very nourishing treatments because you're blonde? Um, I don't do a ton of oil treatments. The ones that I've tried in the past, I feel like made my hair too, too like oily. Yeah. Um, and what, one thing I do really like is I do, I have a lot of, I have very thick hair and it can frizz. So I do use like a, um, um, styling creams and, uh, conditioner, like leave-in conditioner, I think is like, if I was trapped on a desert Island and they're like, you could bring <laughs> one thing, it would be like leave-in conditioner. Um, cause that has just helped my hair so much it, it, cause it does get dry. Cause I am, I do color it and, and, um, you know, I live in a humid climate, so my hair does get like pretty, pretty dry and frizzy. So that is the biggest thing I use like heat protectants. Like whenever I get yeah. out of the shower, I'm using, um, that leave-in conditioner, a heat protectant. Sometimes like if I, if I'm styling it, I'll use a tiny bit of hair oil just on my ends. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that's really, that's really it, oh, I do use hair masks. Um, I actually recently uh, only started using hair masks. I wasn't for a while, even though I know my stylist has been telling me, she's like, you need to do a hair mask like yeah. once a week. Yeah, um, it's definitely good for your end once a week. And just to like have a bit of me time, I think it's really good. Put on a mask, read a book or listen to some music or listen to a podcast or do something for yourself, watch a TV show, whatever. And um, I'm kind of just I'm leave it on for half an hour and then rinse it out. And your hair always feels so much better after a mask. I have to ask you, have you seen the Barbie movie yet? Look, I'm going tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to love it. You're, I'm I know. I'm upset. I w I would have been the person that saw it opening night, but I've been out of the country for two weeks. So I'm like very behind. Every time I open up Instagram, there's like something about the Barbie movie. And I'm all my friends have already seen it because like I came home and I'm dragging my husband to go see it tonight. Oh, Please. yeah. Loads of guys going. To, there were lots of couples when I went to see it and lots of girls, like groups of girls and moms and everything. It, I'm going to go and see it again and possibly even again. And I pre-ordered it as well. So when it comes to TV, I'm going to be able to. I mean, it's honestly fabulous. But what I was going to say to you was just all the different hairstyles, because obviously, you know, when you have a Barbie doll, they're always different, right? And they can be go from different lengths of blonde and, and platinum all the time. And it's I just was fascinated because I love wigs and everything and changing your look. And mm. I really feel that that's like, you know, if you're going tonight, I mean, are you going to wear pink when you go tonight? Of course. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I was hoping. Because I think, you know, anyone, even my clients, they say, I'm going to go see, I like, you have to wear pink. And some women say, oh, I don't really wear a lot of pink. Like even pink lipstick. You have to put something pink on going to see Barbie. It's just, yeah, you're going to love it that's so much. And it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I bet we have a new wave of platinum blondes coming yes. after this movie has come out because even just the movie posters, like I screenshot it. I was like, I love this color and her hair in the um, movie poster. She has like a very gorgeous fringe, ba like a curtain French, bang. Like Parisian bangs. Yes. Yes. And I yes. was like, I was like, I'm taking this to my hair. I have tried to get my hairstylist to give me those bangs several times and she would not do it. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, I might try again. What? She's just like, she's just scared. She's like, you have such beautiful hair and I don't want you to cut something drastic and hate it. And, and she also knows me. Like I'm so nitpicky in particular okay. about my hair, even the slightest change. I I'm, I'm, I'm a psycho. Like at the like, time, the slightest change, there was one time where it was toned like a little bit too dark and I was in a two week depression. I was like. I well, I totally yeah. understand that, actually. I, I I have messed around, obviously, as a stylist. I've messed around with toners and different things. And if my hair, like, if I feel, when I even go a bit darker, just for, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, have very healthy hair. I'm going to tone it down. Sometimes I nearly do feel like that. Like, like I just, I hate it. My makeup doesn't look right. None of my clothes look right. I just don't mm -hmm. see it like me. And it's a huge point. And that's the thing. I think that's what I was going to say to you. Like, your relationship with your hair is a very powerful one. Because you have got, you're blessed, right? Your, you know, gorgeous hair. So. Does that make you feel kind of like, not a power, but like, you know, is it like your superpower? Like when you go out and like, <laughs> say you're with the girls or you're on a date, do you flick it around a lot? Like, is it your thing? Is your hair your thing? 
<laughs> my hair my hair is absolutely my thing okay. it's so funny and it's like been my number one accessory like I'm somebody who like I don't even really do my makeup that much like I I just I do I do my makeup like the same whether I'm you know going to work uh you know going to a workout class or going to like the Met Gala like my makeup is always <laughs> the same I only really know how to do it one way but my hair is like the thing that I always think stands out. Like my outfits, especially coming out of the postpartum period yeah. where like I felt like nothing looked good on me. I was just like, I'm just going to, you know, tease my hair up more and like make it bouncier and more full. And I swear, I always like my hair is just like my thing. It like makes me feel and great. Like it's yeah. Good, um, and it's a good point because I always think that to invest in your hair is like it is an accessory right and and even if you are wearing pieces and different things it's a great investment because sometimes it can really make or break an outfit when your hair is not right I just mm-hmm. don't think you, you feel right and and I think nothing no matter what you wear or which way your makeup is when your hair and you're having like a bad hair day it's just it is awful and it's funny that you say that but is that why you're so reluctant to make any change like even a few very long layers around your face would that be a huge deal for you I actually do have, I have layers right now okay. in front of my face. You can't see it because again, I'm a new mom and my hair is set with a ponytail, just always. But when it's down, I actually do have um, some layers. I love layers, things like that. Um, yes, but that is why I'd say, I, I'd say it's not even me so much as like the hair stylist just will not. She's like, I just don't want to do anything too crazy to your hair because you'll, if you hate it, you're, you're going to hate me. And she's, she's. Probably can, right. Can I tell you something? Because I have clients like at TV years, I would be very re- reluctant is a word to like to change them too much. I know what they like, but I, yeah. still, I still sometimes think that you need a change. Like sometimes, and a very small change can be huge and can really get you through like another year, like it's a new you. And the thing is, hair does grow. So yeah. you're not going, it's not like you're going short. If you did want like those longer like sided bangs or rounded front curtain bangs, it's not like they are going to grow. I think if you went for a full fringe, you might hate it because that that really kind of, you know, it changes your choices of hairstyle. But like if you keep mm-hmm. it up, from your chin down and it's like a shorter like layer, I think you might like that. And when you weigh your hair up, you've got that because it's very in at the moment, the up with that very 90s pieces coming down at the front. And I think that gives you that perfect length. You could go just from even the end of your nose down. It's not huge. So anyone listening, sometimes a little change, it is going to grow back. And yeah. Sometimes I'm not talking about cutting inches off your hair. I'm just talking about slight change around the front when you're looking at Margot Robbie and you're going wow her hair is amazing and also you have to remember that a lot of people are wearing hair pieces and she wears a lot of pieces in all the premieres and the different things going on she's got longer hair and some she's got the ponytail their pieces so I think a lot of people need to remember that too because you know you put a lot of pressure on yourself wanting your hair a certain way and sometimes it's 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 not really accessible to everyone. But a little change, Sarah. I, and if you do it, I want to picture. You have to send me a picture. Oh, yes. We're going to connect off after this podcast. I'm going to take my hair out of this godforsaken ponytail. And I'm going <laughs> to need you to hit me straight if I should do it or not. Because I'm really considering it. I thought well, you know we should do it. And I you haven't even seen you. I've seen your hair down before. But I do think you should do it. I think you'd love it. Yeah. You know what the, the other problem is, though? Is that I have... um. I have somebody I go to here in Nashville. I'm new to Nashville. So like finding my hair person was like, you know, a a journey to find my person. My girl is a colorist. She is incredible at blonde color. But she also is like, she's like, I don't, she's like, I'm not so great with the styling, like the cutting. She's like, she's like, if you really wanted to do those bangs, like I would probably send you somewhere else to get it cut. That's also part of the fear too, is I'm like, I have to like find a whole person like, you know, that I don't know to do this, you know, change that's going to like affect my whole look. Well, and it's so important to get the right person and someone who understands you. So uh, I'm actually just on that. What, like when you were leaving your last hairstylist when you moved to Nashville, did you find that traumatic? Like, like, tra- like, like leaving them? Oh, like, the relationship it was, from, like, it was, it was one of the hard, one of the hardest breakups of my life. <laughs> 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 Well, it was it was funny. I've had some interesting hairstylist relations in my in my life. When I lived in New York, um, I was so, so, so broke. Like I had especially when I moved there, moved there. I I barely had money to eat, but I was like, I need money for highlights. Like I 
I would skip meals so that I could afford my highlights. And I found this guy that like worked out of Chinatown who like didn't speak to me the entire appointment. And he was amazing. And he only charged me like $100. So I went to him for like 10 years. And then I moved to L.A. And when I moved to L.A., I didn't really have any friends. I didn't really know a lot of people. And the girl that I got connected with there to become my hairstylist, like became like my best friend. Like I looked forward to going into her chair. I knew all of her family drama, her kids, everything. I loved her. So leaving her was really, really hard. And I actually planned when we did move, I was like, I'm just going to fly back and get my hair done, you know, like a couple times a year. But then COVID happened. So that right. wasn't a possibility anymore. Yeah, that does make sense. Maybe you need a little LA trip just to get those nice Parisian bangs done around the front and a little catch up with your 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 previous hairstylist. Because yeah. It is hard to a hairstylist, 100%. I mean, I think it's hard when you see a client leave, but a lot of them do try to make it back. And then everyone finds their way. It's, it's not always, you know, you can't always keep flying around the world, but a lot of people do. <laughs> No, I do understand that, but I am going to look at your hair after this podcast and, and I'm going to give you the honest, my honest view on it, Sarah, knowing yes. you and that you're reluctant. And um, so just almost to finish up, because I know you've got lots going on today. You've got to get ready for Barbie as well. Um, <laughs> tell me what, so what to you is a good hair day? What, and, and how do you keep your hair healthy having this good hair day? What makes you feel fabulous about your hair? Um, so having a fabulous hair day. Especially now, I mean, because I wear my hair up so much and because it like getting to even wash it is so few and far between. I mean, we talked about this on my podcast and you gave me a hard time. I've been trying to be better, but I'll go like. I did not give you a hard time. I was, I I think actually I I held right back. (laughs) I was telling Claire, like, I will go four or five days without washing my hair like it's just that's how I've been doing it and she told me that was not the best choice so I have been trying to wash it more but a lot of times even right now you can see I was actually horrified before we did this I was like I cannot believe I'm about to see Claire and she's gonna know I haven't washed it for like three days I don't judge I I I don't judge it's like confession coming to me I don't judge it's like (laughs) have a conversation I mean everyone's gonna listen to this one but um you know and on that note I mean I hope everyone listens to your podcast, especially my episode, and they'll be able to hear my reaction to you telling me that you only wash your hair before. Okay, so go, go, you know, go to to your podcast for that for sure. Um, yeah. So a, a good hair day, like if you're going out tonight, are you washing your hair today? Yes, yeah, so that's what I, okay. that was what I was trying to say. Is a good okay. hair to me today is like when it feels clean, like. Yes. When it is clean and I can run my fingers through it, and it's not like matty and disgusting. And it's soft and bouncy. I love when I have like that fresh hair wash, a nice, just a nice sleek blowout with a little bounce, a little volume. That is my perfect, my perfect hair day. That is your that go-to. It, it just, yes. And it makes me happy. Like I, it could take me from like a level two to a level eight easily, <laughs> you know, like it just that simple, a simple hair wash and blow dry. Oh, I should mention that too. We were talking about like things that, like that I do for me time after a baby, getting a blowout. I remember like the first time just going and getting a blowout after having a baby was like the most luxurious experience of my life. So getting, going out and getting a blowout is probably one of my favorite things right now. Are you going to do that today? We're going to Barbie. Are you going to? No, I wish, I wish, I wish I had more time. Um, No, unfortunately not. But I do try and go, I try and get one at least once a month now. Okay. Uh, that's like a little treat to myself. Um, I try and at least get one once a month. Yeah, you're going to get it down to once a week soon. And then that'll be <laughs> time. After your workout, you're going to go and get your hair washed and blow dried. And you'll get a few days out of that and it'll feel fresh. And then you're going to be Barbie ready all the time, Sarah. So yes. on that note, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to tell you to have the most fabulous time at Barbie. I want to see photos. And, and maybe we can share them on Instagram, your Barbie photos. And, and especially if you get those bangs cut in, everyone's going to want to see them. So, um, yeah, so I want you to share. And thank you so much. So tell everyone where they can find you again, about your podcast and your Instagram as well. Yes. Easiest way to find me on Instagram is Big Kid Problems. Also, my personal is linked there. I'm Sarah Merrill Hall. And then, of course, for any of my pregnant or new mom friends out there, definitely come listen to Bottle Service on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you find your podcasts. Um, uh, come hang out. 
It's and a good time. And Eric, thank you so much. We're going to look forward to coming to Ireland and I'm going to show you around and I'm going to blow dry your hair for you and give you that big blow dry and wash it properly for you. Um, <laughs> oh, sounds dreamy. Place, oh, thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you.